Hey everybody, thanks for joining us for our fifth installment covering export control rules under EAR and ITAR. Now to recap where we are, we said that the rules restrict the export of controlled items without prior approval or a license. And we mentioned before that we're going to frame our discussion of ITAR and EAR around four key areas. Restrictions, exports, controlled items, and prior approval or licenses. Now we started first with ITAR and we've already covered controlled items, exports, and restrictions under ITAR. And in our last vlog, we said that contractors need a license before exporting a defense article and they also need to submit and receive pre-approval of a technical assistance agreement before they can provide a defense service to a foreign person. So today, we're going to briefly talk about three things that contractors should know about licenses and pre-approvals under ITAR. So one thing that contractors should know is that they have to be registered with DDTC before they can obtain a license or pre-approval of a technical assistance agreement. So under ITAR, contractors must obtain and get pre-approval from the Directorate of Defense Trade Controls, which is part of the Department of State. But before they can obtain pre-approval or a license, contractors must first be registered with DDTC. Now contractors have to keep a couple of things in mind. First, they should be mindful of the potential delays that can result from this process. Now we talked in an earlier vlog that an export can occur in seemingly harmless circumstances. For example, sending an email with technical data uh, that's related to a defense article to a foreign-born business partner or a company executive or an executive who is a foreign national. Well, if a contractor decides that this kind of export is unavoidable or even necessary, maybe a contractor needs critical feedback or input on the development of a technology that's going to go into a defense article, for example. Well, before the contractor makes the disclosure or export, it may need to have a license. And even before that, it needs to be registered. Now, the Department of State guidelines give the agency up to 60 days to complete review and adjudication of a license application. So if time is of the essence, this timeline may be very problematic. Now, the upshot is that it's important for contractors to get the ball rolling and registered as soon as possible if they believe that exports are unavoidable. Now, one other thing that contractors should keep in mind is that registration with DDTC is not free. Fees start at a little over $2,000 annually. The second thing the contractors should know is that they must include certification letters and possibly transmittal letters with their applications. An application for a license or approval of a technical assistance agreement has to include a certification letter in which the contractor makes several representations about the criminal background of its key people. For example, an applicant must certify that its board members and the contractor's senior officers are not under indictment, have never been convicted of a U.S. criminal statute, are not ineligible to contract with any government agency, and are not ineligible to receive a license to export a defense article or defense service. Now this certification letter also has to indicate if the person signing the license application or requesting approval is a U.S. citizen or a lawful permanent resident, is an official of a foreign government entity, or is a foreign person trying to re-export or re-transfer a defense article or defense service. In addition, an application for approval of a technical assistance agreement must include a transmittal letter that provides additional background information about the technical assistance agreement, the applicant, and the underlying technology that is the subject of the agreement such as the military security classification status of the technology. So again, the application for pre-approval or for a license will have to be prepared well in advance, anticipating that these other documents may also have to be filed with the application.
The third thing that contractors should know, and this reiterates a point that we made in a prior vlog, is that licenses and pre-approvals are not necessary if there is an exemption that applies to the export. So if a contractor knows it needs to export a defense article or defense service, before it applies for a license or seeks approval of a technical assistance agreement, it should first determine if any exemptions apply. And these exemptions are found in ITAR sections 123 and 124. And as we mentioned in our last vlog on ITAR restrictions, the exemptions apply to very particular circumstances. For example, there are several exemptions for several kinds of exports that the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency are required to allow without a license. There's also an exemption from the technical assistance agreement requirement for training in the operation and maintenance of a defense article that it's, is itself lawfully exported or authorized for export. So if a defense article can be lawfully exported, you don't need to get pre-approval of a technical assistance agreement to cover training on the use of that defense article. So again, before applying for a license or pre-approval, contractors should see if an exemption applies. So to sum up, the three things that contractors should know about licenses and pre-approvals under ITAR are one, contractors have to be registered with DDTC before they can obtain a license or pre-approval. Number two, contractors must include certification letters and possibly transmittal letters with their applications. And three, pre-approvals and licenses are not needed if exemptions apply. Well, that's all for today's vlog. We hope you come back for our next installment in our export control series. And thanks again for joining us in this episode of the GovCon video blog.